About 13% of all energy produced in the United States today is used to heat, cool, and ventilate buildings. And much of it is being wasted. And it is used when buildings are unoccupied. Purdue University is leading a U.S. Department of Energy project, and that is developing sensors to reduce the cost of a building's HVAC system. And it is designed to determine how many people are occupying a room or building by measuring changes in carbon dioxide concentration. Here to tell me all about it is Jeffrey Rhodes, professor at Purdue University. Jeff, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me today. So Jeff, let's talk about the sensor program and the goals that you've set for it. Sure, so I think uh, RPE has a really commendable program here. The idea is, is to try to come up with sensors to count occupants in rooms and buildings. And the idea is, is if we can count those people and tell when a room is occupied, we can adjust the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning in that room uh, so that when it's when the room's not occupied, it's shut off. You can imagine we can save a lot of energy in buildings by doing that. So how are you actually going to achieve that? There has to be really some real technical challenges behind that. There is. So, I mean, we're trying to detect the presence of someone from CO2, right? When we exhale, we put carbon dioxide in the room. So it's a non-invasive way to tell if the room is occupied is to measure that quantity. And then we can actually put in dampers at the HVAC inlets in a room and turn them off uh, when the room's not occupied. And so now we're not going to be heating and cooling spaces when there's not someone in the room. Are we talking about a lot of money being saved? Are we talking about a sustainability kind of approach? What, what are the two things or are there more, multiple objectives with this? I think there are multiple objectives, right? So I think the country could save something like 30% of energy consumption in buildings by using this approach is what the Department of Energy, I believe, estimates. But I think at a local level, right, we could see savings because these are relatively low cost things to retrofit, relatively easy to put in new construction buildings. And, you know, just simple dampers, if you would, could really uh, lead to direct savings on monthly bills. So are you looking then for this, as you just described, it would be for retrofits, new construction? How are you approaching this then? I think really both. I think the program's goal is to have a good technology at the end of three years that can be put in buildings. And so new construction might be a principal target. But you can imagine with uh, the amount of energy savings that there, we estimate these could have, that it might be worth retrofilling buildings as well. How does the research you're doing here differ than some of the other traditional research you've been doing? So there, uh, you know, there are a number of CO2 sensors on the market, but one of the things that my group does is we try to go in spaces where people have maybe come up with super high-tech solutions and come up with lower cost practical engineering solution variants to those. And so one of the things we try to do is make sure we transition technologies uh, you know, from the laboratory to practice. And so we've done some of that work for the Department of Defense in the past. We've done work for an explosive sensing in the past for building protection. And really now we're trying to get into a, a different and bigger market, which is the smart and sustainable buildings area. And looking at that right now and the success that you see that you're having with this and looking at the sensor market, it's really blossoming. I mean, this is really a high growth area that we're seeing right now in the digitization when we talk about the Internet of Things. Yeah, you are absolutely right. I think the Internet of Things has a lot of potential. And one of the challenges is how to leverage that for practical gain. Uh, it's very easy to put sensors on everything, right? And so we need to find ways that are sensible where the sensing solutions are kind of streamlined, can be well integrated to leverage existing infrastructure and really make a difference. Uh, and so I think this is one target area where we have the tremendous opportunity to impact energy consumption around the United States. So who's going to be retrieving this type of information, the real-time information that comes off of these? The facility managers, the, the owners, what are we talking about here? Well, I think certainly facility managers can, can leverage the data and use it directly if they'd like. But our hope is to actually feed these into automated building control systems. And so it's somewhat transparent to the building operator. You know, just this ability, um, much like different sorts of uh, monitoring that we do now, right, this ability to have it done automated, I think, is where the real potential comes. And looking at that right now, that's what we're going to see in a lot of construction going forward, is sensors are going to change the way buildings and information is obtained in those buildings, right? Is that the ultimate goal when you're doing projects like this? I couldn't agree more. I think, you know, when we see the sensor revolution that's happening around the world, we see it in things like small appliances and handheld electronics now. But in some ways, the impact that they can have in that space is minimal. When we think about things that consume a lot of energy, cost a lot of money to build and maintain, 
right? Those are the spaces where sensors can make a big difference. So it could be residential and commercial buildings. It could be civil infrastructure. Those are the places where I think sensors are going to make a big difference in the next decade. So do we have to get the construction companies as well at, to start thinking differently, the owners, uh, the HVAC manufacturers, everybody to think differently about what sensors can do when we're building infrastructure and new projects? I think so. I mean, we can think about ways that sensors can save energy. We can think about ways that sensors can help schedule maintenance. And so we're doing it on an as needed basis rather than a preventative basis. So I think there are a lot of opportunities if we change our mindset to leverage sensors in the field. Now, Purdue does a lot of amazing projects. How does this fit into that framework of all the other things that you've been doing? Right. So Purdue is the home for the Center for High Performance Buildings, which is kind of a leader in the field of trying to take modern technologies, research technologies, and pushing out to the broader HVAC in our industries. And so we really think this streamlines lines in with a new thrust we have in the center, which is really focused on sensors and sensor integration in companies to put that into their products, but also non-traditional and startup companies uh, to leverage these and make sure that they get market penetration. Well, I have to tell you, Jeff, I've really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you so much for being with us. And thank you for having me. And that's Jeff Rhodes, the professor at Purdue University, and that's our Learn It for today.